Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. We're talking about some warm weather this week, obviously, but we're also concerned about maybe some severe weather moving our way. We're certainly going to see a big outbreak to our west. The question is how much of it makes it into the Carolinas. And there are some huge questions, to be honest with, with you, about how much of this will actually make it to the Carolinas. Let's start with first things first. We've got the storm system just developing in the middle of the country. Right here is where we're going to be watching today as a big piece of energy comes out of the Rockies and interacts with what is pretty warm, humid air. I mean, let's throw the temperatures on real quickly here, and I'll kind of show you how warm it is across most of the south. You see all that warm air, but on top of that, it's pretty muggy air as well. If you look at the dew point temperatures, you see that warm, humid air. Dew points and warm air are the fuel for storms. So you need the combination of both of those to surge up here to produce severe weather. You can see today we're kind of in this dry area. So we're really not worried about severe weather today, but that's going to change, especially as we get into likely tomorrow and eventually getting into Friday. So let me stop this real quickly. We'll throw the severe weather outlook uh, for today up here uh, just to show you that severe weather outlook. There it is right there. Let me turn off the satellite. Um, you can see that risk basically from about Dallas into the Mid-South. That's where we'll be watching today for severe weather. Now, tomorrow, this risk begins to develop a little bit more, kind of get larger. You see more of an enhanced risk, um, even a, a, a medium to higher risk for some strong storms across areas of Arkansas, Missouri, uh, I mean, excuse me, Arkansas, Louisiana, into southeastern Oklahoma and Texas. And then... This begins to shift east on day three, which is Friday. You can see the, the large area of medium to low risk. But there are some indications as this front gets closer to us that some of the energy will go away. And we'll take a look at that right now. So let's look at the future cast setup here. We'll go through time. I'm going to widen this out just so you can kind of see the development of this system back to our west. We'll go into the afternoon hour. Stop this about five o'clock this afternoon. You can see the some severe weather breaking out across the central part of the country, the lower and middle Mississippi River Valley. Could even see some rain develop in the, in the Carolinas, but that will be non-severe, not even thunderstorms. As we go into tonight and tomorrow, you see how big this area of rain develops. Now, we will see some thunderstorms try to move through tomorrow. It'll be the leftovers of this first batch. It'll be much weaker as it moves in, but possibly some heavy rain rolling into the Carolinas tomorrow. So not the greatest of days on Thursday. Certainly going to see showers and storms, but tomorrow we'll be watching this area right here as another piece of energy comes into Texas, and this will drive probably a much bigger severe weather outbreak right here. That's what we're talking about right there. Let me go back to the severe weather outbreak or outlook for tomorrow, and you can see the area. That's where we'll be watching tomorrow. So that's kind of the highlight area for tomorrow. Watch what happens through time as this develops and likely even some tornadic cells. I mean, look at that development across the southern plains as that system kind of gets really robust. The low is going to be back here. And as it marches to the east, that is a potent, potent line of severe thunderstorms moving through uh, Texas, Oklahoma into Arkansas. But what's interesting, and this is often the case, if the storm gets mature, gets completely um, you know, together here, sometimes the energy will go up here. The front itself will move into the Carolinas. But if the energy goes up into the Ohio Valley, that could actually keep the system weaker as it pushes east. So if you go through time, Watch this line of storms get closer and closer to us as we go into Friday. So this is Friday. Notice we've got some lingering showers. That's also key because if we see rain early in the day, like you're seeing there, that could help stabilize or keep that thunderstorm fuel at bay. But look at that line. That looks pretty nasty from Kentucky, um, Tennessee, down into Alabama. But as we get later into the afternoon, we get to 5 o'clock. If the line is still to our west, and I'm talking Tennessee into Georgia, um, we're getting towards past, past peak heating here. So we get to 7, 8 o'clock, that line would actually have time to weaken. So the model the data stopped around 7. But that, that tells me that this thing is probably going to be weakening as it pushes to the east. So it actually could be good news for us. But there's so much wind energy with this system that even a weakening line could still have some damaging winds. But I think it certainly would reduce the tornado threat. And speaking of that, let me show you the, the, with a the significant tornado parameter. This is a parameter we look at often uh, for the ingredients for tornadoes. So we go into today, and you can see that risk mainly to our west a little bit, just a little bit there. But let's go into tomorrow, um, not much of anything. And then we get closer to Friday. You could see Friday afternoon, there's the line. So remember the line I just showed you? There's the ingredients just ahead of it. So, you know, down in Alabama and Georgia, definitely some potential. But watch as the ingredients weaken as it pushes east. So that's a real strong indication that the ingredients are falling apart and that maybe will be somewhat stable across the Carolinas. Another way to look at this is these uh, storm tracks that we call updraft helicities. 
basically shows you um, where you're looking at for rotating thunderstorms. Not always necessarily, you know, tornadoes, but rotating updrafts. If we go all the way into when the model ends, which is around 6 p.m., 7 p.m. on Friday, you don't see much across the Carolinas. So the timing of this is really, really crucial. And I can't emphasize that enough because if this timing, if this is slow and this is 7 p.m. and the system is just entering the mountains, that's better for us. That means the system will be weakening and it'll be running out of fuel, which is going to be ahead of it, which would rob it of some of its energy. Also, notice that all the energy is up here in the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley. This is often the case. The low is super strong here, so you see severe weather here, but the energy goes up here. So by the time the storms get here, they're getting farther away from their upper level energy and they begin to lose some of their their strength. You know, the lapse rates are lower, the shear is more unidirectional as opposed to changing directions and we lose some of that thunderstorm fuel that we call cape. So let's quickly look at that cape. So you may hear me say the word cape or what we call thunderstorm fuel. Just think of this as fuel for thunderstorms and you can see it kind of surging into the southern plains and the, the mid-south today. That's why the severe weather is more prominent there. Notice in the Carolinas, not much of it. We're kind of on the fringe, almost a little bit of a wedge. We go into tonight, a little bit moves up here, but it all weakens. And that's what you're seeing there is the loss of daytime heating as the thunderstorm fuel goes down. There's still some at night, but during the day, it's much stronger. You see during the day tomorrow, the thunderstorm fuel surges. As we go into Friday, watch this line head our way. Notice the thunderstorm fuel, there's enough just ahead of it. And remember, when you have a lot of shear, you don't need a ton of this thunderstorm fuel but you need some. And as we get into Friday afternoon, look what happens. The, 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 the cape or the thunderstorm fuel kind of falls apart. So what we'll be watching on Friday is how much of this to our south can get pushed up here. So a couple things I'll watch uh, tomorrow in the next couple of days, the trend in the data, is there more thunderstorm fuel, more sunshine, more heat, more humidity? And, and Friday will be one of those days where if you see the sun, it's not a good thing. That's going to be Friday. Of course, we've got a couple more days to watch this, but just a heads up, we're keeping an eye on Friday. It's March now. We're fully into our severe weather season, and we need to stay weather aware for the potential for some strong storms on Friday. Stay tuned, and I'll have more updates coming up over the next couple of days.